In the last lecture, we have derived the general solution for uh, damped harmonic oscillator. And the general solution is represented by equation number three. In this lecture, we will discuss different damping conditions. First, over damped, second, critical damped, third, under damped. First, over damped. In case of over damped, we suppose that beta square greater, greater than omega naught square. It means that beta square minus omega naught square under root would be real and always less than beta. What does this mean? If you look at equation number three, this term beta square minus omega naught square under root comes up with positive sign in this power and negative sign in this power. So when we suppose beta square minus omega naught square under root is real term and uh, always less than beta, then it means the power would be always negative, not only in this term, but also in this term. Hence, we say that powers in equation three are both negative. Thus, the displacement X consists of two terms, dying off exponentially to zero without performing any oscillation. The rate of decreased displacement is governed by the second term because the first term reduces to zero. If you look at the first term, you can see beta square minus omega naught square under root when real and less than beta, then uh, it means that uh, because we say beta square greater than omega naught square, then uh, if you look minus beta plus beta, then that would be zero. So this term would, wouldn't contribute anything to the oscillation. But the whole contribution comes from this term. This is the reason why we have written here that the displacement X consists of two terms dying off exponentially to zero without performing any oscillation, but the rate of decreased displacement is governed by the second term because the first term reduced to zero. And uh, how the graph would be look like? You can see in here where you see that uh, on X axis we have the displacement and on the Y axis we have uh, sorry, on the x-axis we have time and on the y-axis we have x. So by plotting, we have a behavior like this, where you can simply inverse saying that in case of overdamped, the condition in which the damping of the oscillator causes it to return to equilibrium without oscillation. You see, we can't have any oscillation in this case. Now, because body are displaced returns to its mean position very slowly without any oscillatory motion, hence such type is known as over damped. You can also call this a dead beat. And this is happening uh, if you considering simple harmonic motion in thick oil. If you look the last lecture in which we have supposed that the mass is moving in the viscous medium. If you suppose that viscous medium like thick oil, then the simple harmonic motion wouldn't oscillate longer, but that would behave like over damped. Now in case of critical damping, we suppose that beta square equals omega naught square. So in case when we suppose beta square equals omega naught square equation three, tends to x equals a e power minus beta t plus a to e power beta t. Because e power minus beta t are common in both terms, hence we can write a1 plus a2 into e power minus beta t. Now, once we have this term, now you can see that uh, simply the this behavior showing that the graph would uh, simply goes down and decrease uh, de and decrease up to zero. But if we now suppose that beta square minus omega naught square under root doesn't equal zero, but it equals some small amount that's supposed to be h, which tends to zero, then in that case, x equals a1 e power minus beta plus h into t plus a2 e power minus into b minus h into t we just introduce H in this equation. By doing this, 
we get e power minus beta t as a common from both terms. And uh, finally, we get these two terms out of uh, this equation. Further, now when we extend e power ht in over here and also e power minus ht over here, then uh, doing some calculation, finally we get e power minus beta t into suppose a1 plus a2 supposed to be n plus m t, where m supposed to be a minus a t. So if you look this equation now, we have here e power minus beta t into this term. Now what will happen when uh, there is a time variation? So we can say that when t increases, e power minus beta t decreases and n plus m t increases and the damping is uh, supposed to be critical. Thus the motion becomes aperiodic or non-oscillatory. That is uh, how it looks like in case when we plot this, you can see in here in case uh, of critical damping now that uh, under damped system will oscillate through equilibrium position, uh, sorry, critical damping. In critical damping case now, the criti critical damping returns the system to equilibrium as fast as possible. So it means that uh, the condition in which the damping of the oscillator causes it to return as quickly as possible to its equilibrium position without oscillating means back and forth about its mean position. So this is uh, how you can say that uh, in case of over damped system, the, an over damped system moves slowly towards the equilibrium. But in case of a critical damped system, a critical damped system moves as quickly as possible toward the equilibrium position without oscillating about the equilibrium. So this is the main difference between over damped and critical damped cases. Now, the third one in which we now suppose beta square less than omega naught square. So by supposing beta square less than omega naught square means beta square minus omega naught square under root would be imaginary term. So by taking this supposition now, the equation three will update like x equals a1 e power minus beta plus iota into omega naught square minus beta square under root into t. You see, because we suppose omega naught square is now bigger than beta square. So it means omega, we will write now omega naught square earlier than beta square. So by doing this, we have minus sign over here, which supposed to be minus one under the root equals iota. That is the reason we have iota terms here. Similar will happen in the second term. So you can see here we have minus iota into this term. Now, further suppose omega naught square minus beta square under root equals omega. So by supposing this, we have equation three becomes x equals a1 e power minus beta t plus iota omega t plus a2 e power minus beta t minus iota omega t, which further can be simplified like x equals e power minus beta t into a1 e power iota omega t plus a2 e power minus iota omega t. Suppose this is equation number four. So, because the right hand side of the equation four must be real as the left hand side is real. So the A1 and A2 must be complex conjugates. Hence mm -hmm. A1 equals A plus iota B, A plus iota B and A2 equals A minus iota B. So we now wanna replace A1, A2 by these two terms. So by doing this, you can see I have written A plus iota B in place of A1 and A minus iota B in place of A2. So by doing now some steps, finally we get some terms with the exponential uh, iota omega t plus exponential minus iota omega t divided by two and e power iota omega t minus e power minus iota omega t over two iota, which further can be written in forms of cos and sine. Hence, we have now x equals e power minus beta t into two a cos of omega t minus two b sine of omega t. Let's suppose 2a equals x naught cos phi and 2b equals x naught sine phi, where x naught equals 4a square plus 4 beta b square under root, where x naught equals this term, and 10 phi equals b over a, phi equals 10 inverse b over a. Now, 
this equation becomes x equals e power minus beta t into x naught cos phi cos omega t minus x naught sin phi sin omega t where further we keep common x naught hence we get x equals x naught e power minus beta t and this whole trigonometric identity equals cos of omega t plus phi this is nothing but the equation of of a damped harmonic oscillator in case of critical damping now uh, sorry under damping now what exactly happening in this case now you can see this term and this term is showing the variation in the amplitude where the cos term showing that the motion is oscillatory and uh, as i said the exponential term suggests that the amplitude is decreasing gradually because in the in the result we have a cos term so it means and along with the exponential term so it means this term will show the oscillation motion but this term will show the decrease in the amplitude this is how now the behavior will looks like as shown by the yellow as a sinusoidal form so this is how the under damp case will be happened now we have all these three cases in graphical forms let me tell you what exactly happening in all of these three cases critical damping returns the system to equilibrium as fast as possible under damp system will oscillate through the equilibrium position an over damped system moves slowly towards the equilibrium than one that is critically damped this is exactly the difference between all these three cases 